All right, folks, Aaron Dean, the former Fort Worth police officer, was convicted of manslaughter in the death of Alexander Jefferson. Now the jury has decided his fate, and that is 11 years in prison. He'll be eligible, though, uh, for uh, parole after five and a half years. Uh, the jury deliberated uh, this decision and, of course, came back with uh, that particular uh, decision. This is, of course, quite significant uh, because finally you have some justice, if you will, uh, in this case. Uh, he sat motionless uh, as this decision came down. Uh, and so here is the actual um, reading of that. Good afternoon. Juror number one, it's my understanding the jury has reached a verdict. Is that correct? Correct. Is it a unanimous verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You had it, please, Deputy Nicholson. Mr. Dean. Verdict reads, we the jury, having found the defendant Aaron York Dean guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of the offense of manslaughter, assess his punishment at confinement in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for 11 years, 10 months, 12 days. They do not assess a fine. And it is signed by the presiding juror. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Members of the jury, as we went through before, I'm going to call your... Um, juror number and ask you if this verdict is your individual verdict. Juror number one, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number three, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number four, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number six, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number nine, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 14, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 15, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 21, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 31, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 32, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 37, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Juror number 38, is this your verdict? Yes, Your Honor. Your verdict will be received and filed. Thank you very much. Mr. Gill, Mr. Brissett, is there any legal reason why sentence should not be pronounced? No legal reason. Mr. Dean? It's the jury having found you guilty of the offense of manslaughter and assessed this punishment. It's the order of the court you be remanded to the custody of the sheriff be delivered to the director of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to serve your sentence as required by law. You will receive credit for all the time that you have served in custody on this case from the date of your original arrest up until today, which would be the date of sentence. You have the right to appeal the jury's decision. You do so by giving written notice of appeal to the Second Court of Appeals here in Fort Worth within 30 days. If you are indigent and cannot afford a lawyer, I would, I would conduct an indigency hearing to determine if you are indigent. And if you are indigent, I would appoint a lawyer to represent you on appeal and provide you a record of this appeal at the, at the, of this trial at no cost. Mr. Gill, Mr. Brissett, if y'all will remain on his case pending his decision whether he wishes to appeal, and if you'll uh, furnish the information for the trial court certification of appeal before you leave here today, I would appreciate it. Is there an allocution? Yes. You may be seated. Thank you very much. Is your prisoner, Sheriff? Now, before uh, he was taken away, Ashley Carr got a chance to speak to the man who killed his sister. All right, folks, actually, we had the sound bite, uh, but since she's joining us, uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, joining us right now is Ashley Carr and family attorney uh, Lee Merritt. Ashley, um, in, in the sentencing phase, there's a, a victim impact statement. Um, and so let the audience know what you wanted Aaron Dean to know. Uh, I think you're muted. I think you're muted. We can't hear you. There we go. So there was no, um, there was no repentance in what he did. He showed no remorse through this whole entire process. Um, if it was a, such an accident, why didn't you render aid? Why wasn't that given to my sister? It just showed that he, he looked at her as not being human and actually came in here uh, 
gun charged and ready to kill. And of course, we also saw here where his own partner testified that he didn't even, if the, he claims he saw a gun, but he didn't shout that he saw a gun. Her life potentially was in danger. Everyone's life was in danger because of him. Um, there was no protocol fo followed the, the whole entire thing. We saw that throughout the case. Um, and it was just more and more apparent how reckless he truly was. Lee, it, it, what was crazy to me, even with all of this testimony, even with all the, the, the chief saying he broke all protocols, having his own partner testify against him, this jury still refused to convict him of murder. That's right. And this is the only conviction of a police officer that we've seen in the history of Tarrant County for involving an uh, officer who was on duty to kill a, a black person, a white person, anybody. It's, there's just no real history or precedent for officers being convicted of crimes in this region. Uh, but yeah, the evidence, of course, was overwhelming. Uh, and it was important that the prosecutor got Aaron Dean to say from the stand, you know, when I pointed my gun at the person I believed to be on the other side of that window and pulled the trigger, my intention was to kill them. That's the intentionality that should have got us a, a murder conviction. But I believe in the sentencing, when the, the jurors here, I actually gave him more time than, for example, Amber Geiger got for the murder of Botham Jean. What the jury was telling us is that they didn't buy his story and they want to see him serve serious time. And in so many of these cases, these cops, they sit up there and they talk about, oh, my life was in danger. Totally contradicted by his own partner. Mm -hmm. That's right. We're sitting here now in the home of Yolanda Carr. Uh, that is a Tatiana Jefferson's uh, mother, uh, Ashley's mo mother. Um, and it, it, it's, it's almost surreal to be here three and a half years later um, and know that there's still a lot more fighting ahead of us. But this family has gone just through so much in the past three years that it is a huge relief to know that Aaron Dean will not be going home and going to sleep with his family and spending another holiday season with them without facing some form of accountability. Um, it obviously um, was a lot for your family to have to, to go through this, you know, and it, I just keep saying, I mean, black folks, even if you have, if even, even if you have a weapon in your home, inside of your own home for protection, you can still end up dead. It, it's, it, it is as if the rules for us are completely different than everybody else. That's right. And, and prosecutors in this case, they said this case is so rare, we'll never see it happen again. As if they forgot that this didn't happen until the weekend after Amber Geiger was convicted for doing the exact same thing, shooting a, a black person to death without any justification in their home. You and I know, Roland, because you get the phone calls and hear from the families that we live in the deadliest police culture in the modern world, that, that we kill over three and a half people on average every day. Um, and this should not happen as frequently as it does to any American and, and certainly not as disproportionately as it does to the black and brown community. Yeah, um, I mean, thank, first of all, it's also rare to see the cops indicted. It's even rare to see them actually convicted so thank goodness your family has a semblance of justice. Yeah, it's definitely, um, look, it's, I just was sitting with um, Pamela Turner's daughter, talking to her about the different things. She was just telling us about the process of their trial and did not come out with this outcome, even though all of us saw that she was murdered as well. Um, so it's just uh, a re reality that this system is really messed up that we have to sit and hope and pray that something does uh, come of it as far in the form of accountability. Absolutely. Mm, indeed. Uh, Ashley, Carr, Lee Merritt, we really appreciate you both of us joining us. All right. Thanks for having us, Roland. Thank you, Thank you so very much. Randy, I want to go to you first. Uh, you know, it, it is, you know, all these people who sit here and talk about, oh, you know what? You guys are making a, a mountain out of a molehill. This is not as bad as you think. Atiana ain't coming back. Even though this guy goes to prison, his family gets to visit him. 
-hmm. He's got a shot at parole. He can actually have a life after this. She's dead. You know, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking because, you know, as black Americans, they, they oftentimes try to blame us for our own death, deaths and put us on trial. And you think about how this young lady had done everything right, you know, graduate of Xavier University, taking care of her nephew. I, I've oftentimes been thinking about Zion, like what a brave young man, you know, he is and how this will affect him for the rest of his life. Being at home and yet still shot, I mean, you can't even feel safe in your in your own home. I am wondering about also when they did the psychological testing of Aaron Dean, they're saying that he had nar narcissistic tendencies. Why was that not picked up before he was even hired? Because those testing, that testing is done in about 90 percent of um, but before you're hired to be a police officer. And now they're telling us after the fact, after someone is now dead, that this man should not have even had a gun, should never have been on the police force because he, you, as we see, he has shown no emotion. There's something wrong with this person. Um, and then even going on with the psychological test, are they doing tests to test people's unconscious biases? I mean, if black and brown lives matter and numbers show that we are being killed disproportionately, if these police departments care, why are they not ensuring that they're not hiring people who say who are, have a show a fear of black people? Like they shouldn't even be on the force whatsoever. I mean, there's just so many questions and it's just it's absolutely upsetting. And yes, there's a measured level of justice, but I would say very measured. You know, Michael, um, we should this year, um, the family of Ayanna Jones should be celebrating her 17th birthday. Yeah, here um, in Detroit. And here is... Um, your, sorry, her 19th birthday. Mm -hmm. Here's a young lady, gun dis discharges, hits her in the neck, she dies. Officer, first mistrial, second mistrial, judge dismiss, in the second mistrial, judge dismisses the involuntary manslaughter. A second mistrial, then the prosecutor choose not to try him again. This cop gets off. A seven year old black girl in Detroit, killed. <clears throat> Nobody held accountable. She's dead. He's free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, uh, Ayanna Jones was a real tragedy here in Detroit. I was on the Carl Nelson radio show uh, talking about uh, the developments in that case. Uh, I can't remember whether it was the first trial or second trial that Carl had me on the show uh, talking about it. Um, it, 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 that was that was a tragedy. That was uh, Prosecutor Kim Worthy here that prosecuted uh, her office, prosecuted both cases. And um, after um, the uh, after basically two mistrials, um, she didn't prosecute a third time. So uh, when we look here at a Tatiana Jefferson, I talked about this. Um, I talked about the conviction. Uh, Sunday night on the African History Network show. And, you know, you look at some of the details here. The case is very disturbing because uh, Officer Dean admitted he did not announce himself as a police officer. Uh, also, uh, he did not tell his partner that he saw a gun either, you know, and then to uh, and then to read that uh, the there was a psychologist during the uh, trial who said that uh, Officer Dean has a narcissistic, had, narciss had a narcissistic personality style. OK, psychologist Kyle Clayton uh, said this about Dean and it said that uh, it makes him more likely to engage in behaviors that could put himself and others at risk. So even though uh, Dean's defense attorneys said that he passed a psychological evaluation of the Fort Worth uh, Texas police officer that Fort Worth Texas police officers have to go through, you have to wonder then why wasn't that caught? What has to be improved in that psychological evaluation uh, to screen out police officers? What has to be improved to keep something like this from happening again? So this is still, even though he's convicted uh, 11 years, this is still a tragedy all the way around. This is the one to be a doctor. 
Okay. And, and she'll never get to fulfill her dreams. Mustafa. Yeah. I mean, all this hits home for me. I mean, I agree with what the panelists have just shared. I think there needs to continually be psychological, psychological analyses that are going on throughout law enforcement's career um, because you know, the stressors that folks deal with, uh, the um, biases that they may have may not show up early on, but they might come into play later on. So I think that it continues has to happen. You know, I've lived this before. One of my good friends was actually killed by a police officer back in 2000. His name was Prince Jones. And um, to, to it, it just brings back all these memories of the reforms that we continue to ask for that are slow at best and many times are non-existent. And then you got to ask the question, well, why is it that folks won't move and, and make the changes that are necessary to better protect folks? And, you know, one of the factors is, is that we continue to die disproportionately, black folks. Um, and, you know, so that seems to be one of the reasons that folks refuse to pass significant legislation on Capitol Hill and in state houses. And, and they continue to place our lives in the crosshairs. Um, so until we're willing to make those reforms and to hold people accountable and to make sure uh, that the police unions and others who back up uh, cops that are bad cops, um, then we're going to continue to see this. Yes, folks should support good police officers. But when we have those who are not, then they have to go and they have to be held to the same level of accountability that each and every one of us has. Because if this gentleman hadn't gotten 11 years plus, if you follow the case, if he had gotten 10 years or less, he could actually be out on probation very soon. All right, folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. When you talk about blackness and what happens in black culture, we're about covering these things that matter to us, uh, speaking to our issues and concerns. This is a genuine people-powered movement. There's a lot of stuff that we're not getting. You get it, and you spread the word. We wish to plead our own cause too long have others spoken for us. We cannot tell our own story if we can't pay for it. This is about uh, covering us. Invest in Black-owned media. Your dollars matter. We don't have to keep asking them to cover our stuff. So please support us in what we do, folks. We want to hit 2,000 people, $50 this month, raise $100,000. We're behind 100000 so we want to hit that. Y'all money makes this possible. Check some money orders. Go to P.O. Box 57196, Washington, D.C., 20037- 0196. The cash app is dollar sign RM Unfiltered. PayPal is R Martin Unfiltered. Venmo is RM Unfiltered. Zelle is rolling at rollingsmartin.com. 